tomatoes. <laughs> These are not vine ripened. But they're red. Uh, how about these peaches? Nice, huh? Overripe, overripe, but uh, hey, hey, they'll be fine, you know, as long as we eat them uh, within the hour. <laughs> Corn flakes? Oh, Angela, I should get the one with the, the little pieces of dehydrated fruit. And the little toy inside? <laughs> All right, Angela. I'll eat the flakes plain, and I'll probably like them better. Tony. Just out of curiosity, did I do anything right? Well, I'm sure the expiration date on the, on the milk is good, you know. <laughs> as long as we have it with the peaches. <laughs> Hi, welcome back to... Hey, oh. Oh, hey. The Who's the Boss podcast. I'm Tori. I'm Kevin. And we are here to rewatch and discuss every single episode of Who's the Boss. We got a voicemail. Hey, Tori and Kevin, it's Jamie. I wanted to point out something I noticed when listening to your episode about Farewell to Nick. I don't think they meant it to be, but when Sam catches Mona stealing food from the fridge, I think that's a bit of foreshadowing. I remember there's a scene in season eight when Sam is already off at college where she comes into the kitchen and steals food. And I think Jonathan catches her and they, like, fight or something. And then she says, I'm going to go upstairs to cosmetics on the second floor. So, I, it's a nice call. I don't know if they meant it to be a callback to when Sam caught Mona doing it in this episode. But it's a nice bit of unintended foreshadowing. Enjoying the podcast. Keep up the good work, guys. Bye. Hey, Tori and Kevin. It's Jenny. Um... I was just listening to your episode where you were talking about how Fran Drescher borrowed a lot of things from Who's the Boss for The Nanny. And I just started watching The Nanny on HBO Max. And I have been noticing a lot of things that have been borrowed, like just even in the first season so far. She's gone into the hospital and told Mr. Sheffield that she loves him while under sedation. She's also walked in on him in the shower. So I don't know. I think it's going to be fun to keep watching and find all these little Easter eggs. And I'm also looking forward to your forthcoming The Nanny podcast when you're done with Who's the Boss? (laughs) No? Yes? I think you should. Jenny, Kevin will leave me. if (laughs) I'm not doing that. (laughs) I'm not doing that. Have you ever? Have you even I don't hate ever watched show. the show? I just, I don't think I could do it. I don't. Yeah, I mean, how many seasons is that? Probably six. <laughs> but lot. yeah, I. Oh, I need to go back and watch. I am kind of excited that it's on HBO Max. I haven't started watching it because I cannot go down a rabbit hole of another show. Right. We, or we're never going to get through this. We have a hard enough time just trying to watch murder shows um (laughs) but yes i forgot that she does do the anesthesia thing and walks in on him so i really do need to go back and watch that yeah it'd be fun to watch not do a podcast of it (laughs) and then jamie you are so right and i remember sam coming in and stealing the food and I wonder if it's just that's what you learn from grandma. I mean, yeah. grandma taught her well. Right. That's you just you, steal. When, once you move out, you just come back here and then you take food for yourself. And also, if they did a joke about she's going up to housewares on the second floor, that was also a recycled joke because when Mona's stealing food during the episode of um, Angela's new best friend, mm. my, my mind is useless, who's the boss information, and... Mona comes in to steal the food because the kids are staying with her. And then right. she asks where she can find linens and sheets. And oh, right. Tony says, on, on level two, housewares or something like that. <laughs> Homeware. So that's funny that they reuse both of those. And I got a message on Facebook from Angela. And she said after she listened to our podcast for Two on a Billboard, she went back and watched the episode. And in the podcast, we mentioned that there were some script discrepancies where Angela said she had packed a moisturizer. And then she said, I never noticed before, but if you look at Tony when he's sitting in the chair during the phone call 
At first, he's holding a drink, then he's holding a pair of sunglasses, and then after the pigeon line, when they go back to him, he's holding a little container of moisturizer. Ah. So they must have shot the moisturizer line, and then then they probably also shot the brownie line. So that might have just been sacrificed in syndication or something, and not, maybe it was in the original broadcast. Maybe, possibly. We didn't even notice that. No. No, thank you very much. The only other news we have is that we watched The Hollywood Nights last night. <laughs> what I did didn't you, understand that what did, at all. <laughs> so I didn't realize that this was one of those movies where once someone becomes famous, they then put them on the cover of the movie, right. and then they try to sell the movie as... Okay, yeah. I got roped into a Drew Barrymore movie that barely had Drew Barrymore in it one time also mm. with that. Um, but... Or it was somebody like Drew Barrymore. So the movie, the cover has Michelle Pfeiffer and Tony Danza. Oh, it does? Okay, I can't remember. Oh, yeah. No, no. I didn't notice. And so, and it looks like some sort of love story. No, but it's Like just... romantic comedy, kind of hijinks, sort of a Grease ripoff. Yeah, that's the first thing I thought was Grease. Like the way it was starting, I was like, right. okay, this is... Like a Grease or American Graffiti Right. It is, style. it is known as like the poor man's American Graffiti. Oh, is it? Yes. Okay. But well, the script it's... had absolutely no plot. Yeah, I didn't understand like, like it, where they were. It was just a bunch of scenes. And I swear, Michelle Pfeiffer and Tony Danza probably have eight minutes of screen time total. I know. And I don't understand what's going on between the two of them. Because they're like kind of fighting. Yeah. They're like already I'm... an established couple. They're right. having some issues. I mean, I think they worked it out in the end. They were cute. Like, if we could have just watched them, like, make out for, like, 30 minutes, I would have been, been better happy than what, with we watched. <laughs> what we watched. But, and like, yeah, it's, like, all hijinks and stuff. But there was no, like, character like, development, development no. at all. There was all. no storyline. Like, I didn't line. understand. Was, it was Halloween, but Halloween really weird. wasn't part of it. Like, how did... It was just, I like, mean, dumb jokes and boobs. You always hear people say, how did this get made? But that is truly, <laughs> how did that get made? Because it is just doesn't make any sense. I know. And, and I really thought Tony Danza was going to have more of a role because he was already doing Taxi at that right. point. So you, yeah, but just, really that other guy whose name I can't remember now, he's a comedian and then also a character actor who yeah. plays New Bomb Turk. Um, it's he's really the main character of the movie. Right. They try but, to make it like he's all wacky. I don't yeah. Know. And Fran like Drescher is also in it. John Belushi type character or something. You know what I mean? Like wacky. Right. Yeah. Just bad. Just saw un, didn't, missed the mark there. Um, but Fran Drescher is also And we paid three ninety nine to <laughs> we rent did. it. <laughs> and we were kind of excited. We were like, we'll see. This is, I mean, it's going to, yeah, I figured I it was going to be bad like Grease 2 is yeah, bad. Yeah, like, but still like, have a story. Yeah. I mean, Grease 2 is bad, but I love Grease 2. And Michelle Pfeiffer, I thought it was going to be kind of, Michelle Pfeiffer's in that. And I thought it would be like that type of movie. But. Yeah, I just really don't, like, even if it's a bad story, like, oh, that was kind of a bad <laughs> There was just movie. no story. There was just no story. It was no. really we should stop talking. Yeah. About it. <laughs> it's um, getting angry. The o- okay, the only other bit of news, yeah. I mean it says it's not who's the boss related, but I saw a little thing today about how um Night Court's being rebooted. Oh, nice. And um then I know that I guess what they're going to do is the judge will be Harry Anderson's or character, right. his daughter. Okay. Ends up Becoming a judge, and that's going to be played by Melissa Ra- Roush. Roush, yeah, who was on Big Bang Theory. I think it's Roush. So I feel like that could work. Like she's, yeah, she, she was really good on she, Big Bang Theory. Um, she's going to be the the judge now. I don't. I think I saw that John Larroquette was going to come back, but I'm not sure about Marky Post or Charles Robinson or any of them, um, and Richard Mole, who was Bull. Yes. I don't know if any of them are coming back or not. I didn't. Or Marsha Warfield was also big on that show. I um, I have seen that show. Night Court? But I, just yeah, I used to remember. watch it as a kid. Yeah, I, I remember it. watching it as a kid. But I don't, like, if I watched it now, it would be as if I watched the show for the very first time. Right, because you have no I, idea. I have no recollection. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, okay, so there, that, I mean, that sounds like a pretty solid reboot. Then. Oh, that's, they, yeah, they it's a real They already have, it's, like, somebody um, casted. Yeah, yeah, that's the real deal. Unlike the Who's the Boss one, where it's almost been a year and we've don't know what's happening. Heard nothing. Oh, okay. One other thing about Alyssa Milano, she's going to be doing cameos for charity. All of the money is going to go to help India, which is just 
being ravaged, ravaged yes. right now by coronavirus. Yeah. So um, you can sign up at cameo.com and then search her name. And then I'm not exactly sure what they cost, but all the money goes to charity. And basically a cameo is you can just have a little video message. I did one for the girls. Yeah, I remember that. When she was raising money for the Democratic Party. And um, she just, I mean, she went way above and beyond what I was expecting she was like a minute long message and she talked to the girls and she talked to them a little bit about like the who's the boss mm-hmm. reboot and stuff like that. And that when she was their age, she was on this show and all this stuff. So it was really cute. So if anybody is interested in getting one of those for someone, do it. Or if you're interested in getting one of those and asking if she knows anything about the who's the boss podcast, I mean, the who's the boss reboot, <laughs> <laughs> not the podcast, the reboot. I was thinking of doing that. Let me see how much it is. It goes to charity. So, all right. Now. Let's see. What is tonight's episode? It is the um, what? No, I was going to say the name of it, and then now I can't remember. Okay. Hell on Wheels. <laughs> Hell on Wheels. Season four, episode eight. Hell on Wheels. That's it. First aired on Tuesday, November seventeenth, nineteen eighty-seven. So wait a minute. Did we do something out of order here? N- n- no. We didn't. Okay. They may have. No. No. Um. I, I, you know what? I don't even remember what I said the date of last episode was, but no, okay, I don't think so. It was written. <clears throat> oh, and the TV Guide Sorry. summary says When Tony injures his foot, Angela hires a nurse who turns out to be more pretty than practical. Yeah. Uh, okay. I, uh, I mean, yeah, well, I mean, we'll talk about it when we get into it. That makes it seem like there's a little some... more of a right. jealous storyline. Right. Which it... which it could have gone in that direction, but I really didn't feel like it did, surprisingly. Um, do you have one that you would like to share with the class? I do. I okay. always do. I got these internet movie database ones okay, that are so it. fun. When Tony's accidentally injured twice due to Angela, <laughs> she, out of guilt, decides to take care of him. Tony, however, is unsatisfied with Angela's household and Angela's household and hires a nurse who turns out to be even worse. But he doesn't hire no, the nurse. No, he doesn't. Yeah, that's a pretty bad description. <laughs> and then there's a storyline. Tony remains... Tony remains a perfect gentleman after clumsy Angela caused him to break a foot during golf game. He insists to <laughs> this is the one that I think is translated. Right, from. yes. He insists to keep doing the household and resents the idea of help until Angela accidentally makes him fall and break the other foot. <laughs> she now insists to take him to take time off to help the wheelchair victim. <laughs> That's fantastic. <What? laughs> but he won't lower any standards, which to her, feels nitpicking. Feels as nitpicking. She leaves the ingrate, ingrate. Is that how you say that yeah, word? Yeah, I think so. Ingr- to to agency nurse Doreen, who proves a winning novice. He can neither bring himself to fire nor does any right. Okay. <laughs> what? <laughs> I love these old. I like the wheelchair victim. I do too. I think that's hilarious. Wheelchair victim. Okay, so this episode was written by Matt Geller. This is the only episode of Who's the Boss he will write. And he has nine writing credits. Fame, The Littles, mm. Care Bears. Fame, 11 the movie epi- or, an epi- or a TV, a TV show? The TV, the TV series. show, okay. Yeah, one episode of the TV series. Uh, 11 episodes of Care Bears. <laughs> Hotel, The Cosby Show, a couple episodes of Facts of Life, oh, okay. one episode of Married with Children, two episodes of Small Wonder, and one episode of Who's the Boss? Small Wonder. And then, okay, great. And then he hasn't um, <laughs> written, he, he didn't write anything after 1987. Okay. Okay. So, oh, my, oh my gosh, like a bull in a china oh, shop no, back there. That was our daughter. So when this episode opens... Tony's a total dad, and he's walking into the house, and he's like, okay, I've got the car all packed up, and the kids. <laughs> so the kids and everything is already in the car. He's ready to go. They don't ever explain exactly where they're going, but what I can gather is that it's some sort of, like, fair or festival where there's going to be well, yeah. a two-legged race. Yeah, like a, it's almost like a company picnic type of thing. Yeah, but maybe obviously it's a PTA it's nobody's... thing he set up. Yeah, something. maybe. But yeah, they don't explain it. I know. There's so many holes in this episode. <laughs> so he comes in and he says, the car's all packed up. Has anyone seen the front, the loaf of French bread that I had? And Angela's like, oh. And he says, the whole loaf? And as 
he's looking for the loaf of bread, she's also eating like a plate of spaghetti. Or I something. know because she's carbo loading. Right, she and that's what it. she says. She's like, I'm I'm carbo loading. I'm loading up for the big race. So. The two of them are going to be in a three-legged race. <laughs> <laughs> Just <laughs> eating, but he ate a loaf of bread. I know, it's, it's not a marathon, Angela. Like, how, what do you think the distance is of a three-legged race? You don't even run. I mean, you just hobble. You're just going to be weighted down by all the bread and pasta. <laughs> it's like the episode of The Office when Michael's eating <laughs> the, the pasta. Pa- oh, yeah, oh, what God. is it? Alfredo? Yeah, pa- it's like for Alfredo. <laughs> he starts throwing up. So Mona's like, Angela, they're going to have to roll you across the finish line. And she, she's right. <laughs> yeah. And Tony tells her, you know, you're taking this too seriously. She's like, you know, I just, I really want to be at my peak here because I know how important this is to you. <laughs> my peak. Right. And then she says, if you want to pick another partner, I understand. And he immediately goes to Mona and says, Mona. Yeah, exactly. And Angela gets all upset. And he's like, no, I'm just kidding. Um, he said, how are we supposed to win this race if I can't even pull your leg? Mm. But I do think it's cute that Tony asked Angela to be in the race with him. Yep. Because normally I feel like he would have tried to find anyone else but Angela. So he must want to be with her more than he wants to win this. (laughs) Um, And Angela's like, you know, you're just, you're a first rate athlete. (laughs) Yeah, what? (laughs) And then she says, I'm just not sure these legs are good enough to hold up to your legs. Okay. And then he says, hey, oh. I know. Oh, hey. Oh, hey. I should have captured that one. I know. That was good. a good one. Those legs are great. I know. It basically says, hey, your, your legs are hot. Yeah. And he's looking at her. He's looking at her legs and Even some serious jeans. mom jeans. Right. Yes. But whatever. Mom jeans with like the largest sweater you've ever seen and a jacket over top of that. I know. It's almost like, what is that jacket? I'm not sure. Is it denim? It's I like don't a know, denim but it's so blazer huge. or something. It's very large. And it's, and I like that she has a little red ribbon that matches too. And then he's kind of got the double denim going on, which was big back then, and it's coming back now. Yeah. And I don't like it. Um, so then Mona has to get in on it. She says the gams don't fall far from the tree, which means that she has nice legs, too. Uh, I see. Yes. Yeah, I understand now. We know it. Okay. So they leave to go, and the kids are just not in the scene because they're in the car already. <laughs> I guess they right. figured, like, we don't really have anything well, for them to do. Let's not mess with them. Yeah. yeah. We'll just have them in the car. But that's a good... I mean, these kids are older, but sometimes you have to send your kids out to the car to start buckling because it takes 15 minutes before everyone's in and stops fighting. Right. So he's like, all right, come on, let's go. And then they put their legs together and start trying to walk yeah, the same way work. out the door. <laughs> and as Tony's closing the door, he says, oh, you better be faster than that. And the door shuts. I know. And, and then they do the the... Cheesy television yes. transition where the screen like flips yes, it, like, to let you know time has passed <laughs> and they're coming in the door now. Yeah, the, so they have a screen like, what do you, I don't even, like a little flip and then the door opens again and Angela's walking in with a picnic basket saying, I'm sorry. I know. And you I'm know sorry. something terrible has yeah. happened. <laughs> and then Ho- Tony hobbles in on crutches. His jeans are rolled up on one side and he's got like an ace bandage around his foot. So he's sprained his ankle. And he said, she's saying, I'm sorry. He says, Angela, for the 83rd time, it's just a sprain. And sprains are part of sports. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I mean, really, the three-legged... A potato sack race is sports? <laughs> Wait, was it a three potato leg- sack or no, three-legged? No, no, I think it's three-legged oh, okay. race. Three-legged race. Um, so then... Sorry. No, you get so excited about potato <laughs> sack races. <laughs> Angela says, I should have never stopped to pull up my sock. And Tony's like, what, you stopped for a sock? And she said, over the edge. Yeah. <laughs> she said, well, it got all bunchy. Mm. And we would have been fine if you hadn't started to drag me across the finish line. But Tony says, it was, the, it was like 10 feet away. We were so close to winning. And the Borofskis were closing in on the us. The Borofskis. Yeah, so. Is that the Russian family that lives in the neighborhood? Or? I feel like we've heard of the Borofskis before. But I couldn't. Remember, if anyone knows, let me know. The only other thing is that we know someone with the last name Broski, so I think maybe I'm thinking. We do? Yeah. 
Um, I'm thinking that maybe I got confused knowing that I know the last name hmm. and thinking that I, because for some reason I thought it was the two girls at the a moving episode, the twins, and I went and looked them up, but they're the Futterman twins or something. Oh, yeah. Brofsky, so I don't know who it is. Now the kids are here for this scene. They've come in the door. Right. And Samantha says, you would have won, Dad, if Angela hadn't pulled you back. And then Jonathan says, I never knew that an ankle could bend that far. Oh, yeah. Terrible. I know. That really does sound awful. <laughs> and Tony says, neither did I. But Angela's like, do we have to rehash this? Like, can we please just stop? And Tony says, you know, it's just we lost. We just lost out on a really great trophy. <laughs> Who cares about <laughs> <You know>? the trophy? <laughs> what was he going to do? Put it on that little table behind the couch, like his bowling one? Right. Um and Samantha says, ah, look at the bright side. You made, look at how happy you made the Borofskis. But he doesn't care. And then she's like, ah, don't worry, you'll win next year. And Jonathan says, yeah, if you dump my mom. It's not nice. <laughs> I know. Yeah. And that, that even sounds more like, I, I, like he didn't say ditch my mom. He says like dump my mom. Right. Like as if they're dating, which they're not. So Angela, um. She's telling them, you know, like, okay, you, you have to relax and stuff. And Tony's like, no, I'm going to go make dinner. And Angela's like, you're supposed to rest and, like, try to heal your ankle. Let's do something really easy tonight. Let's do Franks and Beans. Mm. <laughs> and Mona says, oh, yeah, yeah, that sounds really good. And then Angela offers to help cook dinner. And he says, we've already had one disaster today. I know. Like, we don't oh. need another one. I know. Just offering to help. So he's like, we're not having franks and beans, and you're not cooking. I'm making veal parmesan. And Mona's like, oh, thank God. Right. Because really, Mona, she didn't want just, fran- I know, Mona, Still go- leeching off the... <laughs> go eat your own food. <laughs> go eat your own food that you stole earlier right. in the week. Like, why do you have to... Why are you here for dinner all I the know. time? So Tony starts to hobble into the kitchen with his crutches, and he doesn't want any help. He goes in. And then we get this, I mean... This is all Tony Danza, I feel yeah. like, here. He's going to show... So, first of all, he's looking for tomatoes. I know. And for some reason, they're above the refrigerator in the cabinet. I know. And I was and very confused stuff over. by that. So, yeah. <laughs> I don't think he meant to do... So, first he goes yeah. over... He's holding on to the crutches, and he goes over to the refrigerator. And he tra- starts to reach in the cabinet over the refrigerator for tomatoes. So, I didn't realize that anyone put anything in that cabinet other than all the mm. shit you never use. Right. Because that's, no, that's, that's what's Tony above our refrigerator. His- it's his tomatoes. Yeah, and then I was thinking, would you keep tomatoes in a cabinet? But I did look up, and it says that you're supposed to keep... You keep the light off of them Yeah, like in a dark, cool, room temperature place. Hmm. So maybe he's on to something. Yeah, we should maybe. be putting stuff other than water bottles we never use and old lunch boxes. We use those. Above the refrigerator. I put my beer growlers up there. I oh, use those. Okay. That is true. So... He's looking for tomatoes, and he realizes, he realizes he's not going to be able to reach. So he goes over, and he gets a stool. A conveniently placed stool. Yes, right next stool, to the water cooler. Right there next to the water cooler Normally that's never, never there. Normally never there, no. Then he wears it like a necklace mm, and hobbles back over to the refrigerator and puts it down in front. And then he is doing a little hop to get up on each step with the... Um, the crutches and he's like almost loses his balance at one point but he, he gets it it's very tony though hopping up on the oh of course yes the, there's another there's a few tony like i feel like this is all tony danza like i got this you know let me jump hop up there show him what i can do and then the same thing later with the wheelchair so angela said back out in the living room angela is talking to mona and she's like I, i'm gonna go in there Look at that old cooler. I know, it's awesome. I, I remember those, like taking that to the summer igloo. camp as a kid. Yes. Um, and Mona says, you know, he's very independent. You know how he is? Just leave him alone. Let him stand on his own two feet. And actually, he only has one now. Right, bad and joke. <laughs> Angela says, no, I'm going in. And she doesn't even, she barely even gets the door open know. before... She knocks him off that Well, that's stool. what I'm saying. I, that's why I got so confused. Did he... Are we led to believe that he just fell when she walked in, or did she somehow knock him off the stool? She somehow knocked him off the stool. Right, so, okay. Uh, Maybe he had a crutch out in the air, and she hit it with the door, and then it knocked him in the head, and then he fell off the stool. So now the uh, the shot of the front door does another little dissolved flip, and now in comes Tony. 
And Angela's saying, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And he's in a wheelchair. And <laughs> so he still has the one pant leg that's rolled up with the ace bandage around it. Now, the other pant leg has just been cut and right. ripped open <laughs> because he has a full cast on it. <laughs> so he has a sprained ankle and a broken leg. And again, Angela's like, I'm sorry. Tony says, it's no big deal. Losing the use of both of your legs is just part of sports. <laughs> just part of sports. <laughs> and apparently also making veal parmesan. And Angela says, I'm going to take care of you. And she starts wheeling him into the living room. And Tony's like, okay, well, just watch out for the couch. And she misses the couch and then slams him into the table behind the couch. <laughs> like, there's no way she didn't see that. I know. Jams his legs right into it. <laughs> Although I will say, when our kids were younger and we had one of those enormous double strollers, it was really hard to gauge. Yeah, I was. slammed our kids into lots of things. Yeah, I did. Bushes, tables, yeah, yeah. Uh, people. Because it, it, it's, it is kind of hard to judge exactly how much room we have in front there. So Tony is like, okay, please, Angela, I'm running out of limbs. Like, will you just let me <laughs> do this on my own? <laughs> I'm running out of limbs. And Samantha says, can you believe it? A hairline fracture three hours after spraining the other foot. Like, what do you think the odds are of that? And Tony says, a million to one, but I had help. <laughs> Poor Angela. So I know. now Mona and Jonathan come in that like back side door. And Mona's like, ooh, nice wheels. And Tony, and Jonathan's all excited, too, that Tony's in a wheelchair. It's a cool wheelchair. Yeah. <laughs> and Tony says to Mona, let's go cruise the main drag. It's very Hollywood nights. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, that's what they would do. Mona says, you know I'm a pushover for a guy in a convertible. <laughs> and then she says, or a four-door, or right. a compact. Or anything. And Angela says, or a skateboard. <laughs> <laughs> skateboard. <laughs> Which is kind of creepy, but also funny, because it's Mona. Um, so Jonathan's like, you know, that cast is really awesome, but what if a pregnant aunt crawls up there and lays eggs inside your cast? And jo- <laughs> Why would he think of that? I don't know, because they don't know what to do with Jonathan. So that's, yeah. this is Jonathan's um, contribution here. So Tony's like, wait a minute, there was an ant in my sock at the picnic. <laughs> but they're like, it's going to be fine. And he, yeah, Angela says, Jonathan, why don't you go upstairs and play with your crustaceans? But crustaceans. I'm confused. What, since when does Jonathan have crustaceans? I don't know. Isn't that like crabs and That's stuff? That's what I would think, yeah. He's got, well, we know he has a gerbil. And he did have, hey, we know he has lizards or an iguana, but whatever. Again, it's like they don't even know Jonathan. Who no, is they this don't. Kid? <laughs> they don't. So both of the kids really kind of didn't have any. This episode is very thin as far as a storyline. And then trying yeah. to weave the kids into it, I feel like was also sort of awkward because now here, Samantha's like, oh, well, this means you're not going to be able to go to my school open house. And it's just kind of like a little thing that's thrown in there so she can do like these cute accents and make a little joke, but it really has nothing to do with anything else. No, it doesn't. Um, And so she's like, you're not going to be able to make it to open house night. And then Tony's like, what are you talking about? Doesn't your school have a ramp? And she says, oh, it does. But, you know, the rate you're going, you'll end up in a full body cast. So she's thinking, like, this is her ticket to him not going to talk to any of her teachers. She's like, don't worry about it. I know exactly what they would have said. One teacher says, oh, she's a very hard worker. Right. The other teacher says she has outstanding penmanship. And then another teacher says that she's a charming child, smart as a lightning bug, and, like, does this little southern accent. And Tony's like, well, you forgot about Mr. Maselli, who is going to be there no matter what. And then Sam's like, oh, and then walks away. Right. Like, what was that? I don't know. Like, it's not setting anything up. Right. Yeah. Just uneventful. Just something, I guess, to get the kids involved here. He's saying that he's going to go to the open house night. And Angela is saying, you know, you only have one job to do here. And it's for, it's to get better. Like, you need to heal your foot and just relax. So she says she's going to hire someone to come take care of him. And he says, someone in my house. (laughs) 
But that's really cute because, like, Tony really thinks that this is his house and he doesn't want somebody else in there, like, taking care of him and or doing anything in the house. So he, she, he says, absolutely no way. So Angela's like, well, okay, there's only one other idea. You know, it's pretty light at the office right now. So, you know, mother, maybe you can. And then and um, Mona's like, oh, yeah, I'll take some time off. I know, immediately. <laughs> right. But Angela's like, no, no, you're not going to take care of Tony. And she's like, I don't want to take care of Tony. I want to go to Atlantic City. <laughs> For not, a week. Yeah, not helping at all. So she's like, Angela says, you can't go to Atlantic City because you're going to have to watch The Office because I'm going to stay home and take care of Tony. Mm. And Tony's like, no, you already have a job and you don't need to stay home from your job to try to take care of me. Like, I got this. I don't need any help. He says, when I was in high school, I had baseball practice. I had two jobs and I was dating the Benedetti twins. The Benedetti twins. (laughs) I feel like every time it's a twins with different names. Like, I feel like when we met the Futterman twins, there were lots of twins in Tony's past. Yeah, there was. <laughs> um, and so he says, and let me tell you, they were enough all by themselves. But I didn't ask for help then, and I'm not asking for help now. So then he says, if you'll excuse me, I'm going upstairs to take a shower. And then he spins around in his wheelchair, and, then, and he yeah. looks up the stairs. I, know, I love this shot. Yes, so we get this great shot of looking down at Tony from the stairs where it looks like we see the fourth wall, but it makes the house look so much smaller. I know. Than it I, is. They're just hoping that people weren't <laughs> right, gonna notice. watching their pers- perspective. But if you look over his left shoulder, you see what we see normally as the secretary desk there, the writing desk. Right. And then we can see like a beam behind him where the baseboard goes from like the foyer area with the linoleum to the wallpaper that we see in the part of the living room. But that was fun. We never really get to see those shots. So he looks up the stairs, and then he says, will you help me, please? So yeah, like, okay. (laughs) How was Tony planning to get up and down stairs? I don't know. I don't think he was thinking about it until it was time to go up the stairs. Yeah, like, no one, he's not going to be able to be home alone with anyone, with, you know, home alone at all, because he can't do anything. I guess he could use the downstairs bathroom, and then just at the end of the day, someone can bring him upstairs. But will someone please write the fanfic where Angela has to help give him a bath? Because there's no way he's going to be able to shower on his own. <laughs> well, that yeah, yeah. And then Doreen later saying she's going to sponge bath him, but we know Doreen left, so somebody had to do it. And I think That's Angela true. would have been up for the job. Just wrap his feet in some plastic, throw him in the bubble bath. Okay, hang on. Rip My episode feet. got messed up. We cut to the next day where Angela has gone to the grocery store. Tony must have given her a list. She's brought everything home. She says, like, Tony, where are you? And she goes out into the living room where Tony is coming in the front door soaking wet. <laughs> so oh, yeah, that's right. He went to That's get- cut out of the... Oh, the antenna TV one? Yeah, the one okay. I, well, yeah. I don't know if it's cut out of the antenna TV, but it's cut out of the... I watched it where whatever I watched it on earlier. Oh, uh, what did you watch it Daily on? Daily Motion. Oh, yes. Okay. So it might be cut out of this this one also. But the yeah, Broken Channel right. one had it, and so did Crackle. So Angela goes looking for Tony in the living room, and he's all wet. She's like, you're all wet. And he says, holy mackerel, you're right. But he he's angry. <laughs> you can tell he's super annoyed. She asked him what happened, and he said, the sprinklers. I went, I wheeled out to the sidewalk to get the paper, and he said, and as, as I was wheeling back, I heard the sound. I heard the rushing water through the sprinkler. <laughs> rushing water. <laughs> and you, you, we've all heard that sound when, yeah. <laughs> when you realize the sprinklers are about to turn on and you have to get out of there. So he says, the next thing I knew, the little nozzle heads popped up mm-hmm. and he was trying to wheel away, but it was too late. He well, said he was wheeling for his life. <laughs> he didn't make it. And Angela's laughing. She's really enjoying this story. <laughs> so he said he was caught in a vicious circle of water. And she says, you have to be more careful. You don't even know how to maneuver this thing. But he (laughs) says, stand back. Okay, so now... All this is cut out. So this was cut out of the... um, Which... Uh, This goes... This is the antenna one? This antenna one goes right to... um, 
It goes right to Mona in the office. Oh, okay. Yeah. So they cut a lot out of the antenna TV version. It goes to that and then it goes to this. Okay. So on the Roku version that I have, he now pops a wheelie in this wheelchair. Oh, they should have left that in. That's the most impressive. I know. And then he puts his leg, he puts the leg with the cast up on his knee. Right. And he's like, oh, you know, you get a little comfortable. And you can tell Angela's like, whoa, 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 whoa. And is it Angela or is it Judith? Because like at any point he could have just fallen back and cracked his head. I know. It was impressive. Yeah. And then he's like, let's see how low we can go. And he goes pretty far back and then he comes back up. So did Tony Danza spend some time in a wheelchair at some point? Or did he practice this all week? Or did he just know how to, does he just have really good balance? Because he's all over the place in that wheelchair. So as he's showing off and she's walking away, she's like, I guess you're not interested in what I got at the market. But he's like, oh yeah, oh yeah. So he wheels really fast into the kitchen. So she starts to show him what she brought home. And the first thing he notices is that she has paper bags. And he's like, oh, you have paper bags. I thought I asked you to get plastic bags. And he's like, oh, okay, but that's it's fine. Never mind. Did you get tomatoes? And she's like, I did. So she hands him, she hands him what looks like an apple, but I don't know if they're pretending it's a p- tomato because they didn't have a tomato, or if it is just a very unripe tomato. And he's like, oh, okay, well, then you know they're not vine ripened. And she says, but they're red. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then she's like, okay, well here, how about the peaches? And then he's holding the peach and he's like, overripe. But, you know, it's okay. As long as we eat them within the like hour. today, yeah. Right, they'll be fine. <laughs> She's like, okay. So then she gets out a box of cornflakes. And he's like, come on, I told you to get the one with the little hydrated, dehydrated fruit pieces. And I, now she's starting to get angry. And he's like, it's fine, you know, I'll just, I'll eat them without the fruit and I'll probably like it better. Yeah, what are they, what are they cornflakes? Yeah. I don't remember them with dehydrated. I do. I never liked them. Really? Yeah. It was like little dehydrated pieces of strawberry, I think. Okay. Well. But I like my cornflakes plain. Um, So Angela says, can I just, I mean, did I do anything right here? And he's like, oh, I'm, you know, the milk looks good. And so he says, I'm sure the expiration date's good. And then he picks up the milk and he looks at it and he says, as long as we eat it with the peaches or have it with the peaches. Right. Right. So Angela bought milk that was expiring the same day. (laughs) I know. She bought over, I know. But this is, okay, so you're not like Tony, but this is me when I go to the grocery store. I'm getting better because I'm home now more, so I have to go to the store more. But for a long time, you did most of our grocery shopping, and I had no idea where anything was at the grocery store. I know. And I hear, like, other women complain about their husbands. Like, they'll send them with a list, and the husband's just texting them the whole time. And that's me. Not anymore, though. I am getting better. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, you are. Yeah, because I've but been yeah, home you more. Didn't, yeah, I don't well, know Well, because why. you had a schedule where you where were out early to, right. during the day, so right. you could go do stuff like go to the grocery store. Right. And I was at work until I would go to pick up the kids at dance. Wow, life is much different now. It really is. Okay, so at the Bauer Agency, Mona's hanging out there. The phone rings, she picks it up, and it's Angela. And Angela's like, how's it going? And she says, oh, I'm swamped with work. And then she just holds a pencil down and a typewriter. I know. You can tell she's not typing. It sounds like she's typing really fast. She's like, so much work, so little time. And then she asks, how is Tony? And Angela says, I'll tell you how Tony is. He's nitpicky, he's obsessive, and he's impossible to please. And Mona's like, oh, he's like you. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) So your episode went straight to this? Yeah. Well, it went... It cut out all of the grocery shopping part and just went straight to her complaining about Tony. No, I think I went to the wrong place. She's on the phone with him. Right. With, with her mom. With yeah. Mona. All yeah. right. And she's complaining here. Okay. So, yeah. then But you didn't have any of the stuff before that. No. Okay. Yeah. So, um, Angela, now here we go. Mona has to, again, be the equalizer. And she's like, you'd have to understand Tony. Like, it's very hard for him to ask for help. He's used to doing things on his own. And, you know, he's not, he doesn't want to seem vulnerable at any point. And Mona's like, okay, so now what is it that you always tell me when we're at work? And Angela says, stop talking on the phone. (laughs) And she says, exactly. I got to (laughs) go. Right. That's right. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) So she hangs up. 
So Angela goes back out of the living room and she figures she'll talk to Tony. And he's folding towels over on the corner. Right. And she comes out and for some reason she decides she's going to rearrange the pillows. Yeah, start fluffing them yeah. and moving them around. And she says, you know, I just really feel that we should keep today free of conflict and anxiety. We should just really try to have a fun day. And she's messing up all the pillows on the couch. I know. He can't take it. I know. <laughs> but also, Angela has lived here for how long with Tony? Like, you'd think she would know how the pillows go on the couch at this point. But yeah. I guess she's never noticed that they're in, like, a certain order. And Tony does. So she's like, what's wrong? And he's like, oh, nothing. And she's like, is it something about how I just rearranged the pillows? And he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, no, no, it's fine. It's it's the new way. I know. I like <laughs> How passive aggressive he is. <laughs> he said it's a different way, but it's a good way. Right. And she's like, okay. And then she's like, why are you folding laundry? Like, you need to rest and relax. The only thing you should be doing is trying to get better. So she's like, let me do this. And he's like, okay, go ahead, fold away. So she gathers all the laundry and sits down to start to fold it. Now, of course, the first five things on the very top of the laundry are all of Tony's little gray white gray tidies right call them. tidy grays i guess so tidy whities they're um they're like tidy whities but they're gray yes so she's just kind of laying them and like half folding them on the coffee table so that they're not going to fit very well in a drawer no not and, the way she's folding <laughs> but like i don't know maybe i'm a bad adult i don't even really i mean my own underwear i just kind of ball them up and shove them in my drawer <laughs> Because, I mean, I, how they're, how do you even fold them? And then it's not like, I mean, if they're wrinkled, who the hell cares? Right, exactly. But, so he's looking at her doing this, and he's getting distracted. And again, she's like, is something wrong? And he's like, oh, and you know, you just, you would have no way of knowing this. But my drawers go like this, and he shows the long way. And not like this, and he shows a wide way. Right. So if you don't fold my underwear a certain way they're not all gonna i'm not gonna get six across and they're not all gonna fit and then some are gonna fall down into my sock drawer but i love how he says you would have no way of knowing this as if it isn't all of angela's furniture i I know right (laughs) you would have no way of knowing this except for the fact that you bought my dresser as to how my underwear goes gosh so she's like okay um you know what that's fine, but, you know, we, and he says, we wouldn't want my underwear to fall into the sock drawer. And she's like, no, we wouldn't want that. But we would like a little appreciation for yeah. someone who's trying to help. So he says, you know, I, I really do appreciate you. It's just that, you know, if he's having a tr- trouble with things being done exactly the way he does them. And she's not happy with that. So she's like, you know, if you really... If you really appreciated this, then you would understand that there's more than one way to do something. And he says, yes, there's my way, and then there's the wrong way. (laughs) (laughs) Or there's your way, and then there's the right way, something like that. So now they start to argue, and she says, you know, oh, well, I don't want to be a burden to you, and I'll just leave, and you can be on your way. And then he's saying, I wouldn't even be in this chair if you hadn't choked in the three-legged race. So it's starting to get ugly. Yeah. And then Angela's like, okay, well, then I'm going before the telethon starts. Oh, no. <laughs> and now here she says, let me leave you to your tomatoes and your peaches yeah, and your plastic bags. And she walks out. She says, in your six rows of underwear. But if you would watch this on Antenna TV, you wouldn't understand why she was saying tomatoes or peaches. No. Because you didn't see that scene at all. No. She leaves. She walks out the front door. And Tony's like, eh. Oh, well. And then he says she forgot the pillows. And he goes over and starts to rearrange them because he just cannot take it. No, he can't take it. They're not the way he likes them. (laughs) So now back at the office, Mona's having a full-on party. People are dancing. And I, oh, I got to find out. There was a part that I think I saw in one episode, one cut that I didn't see in another. Hang on, I'll see. Okay, so Angela walks into the party and some guy's like, hey, who's the babe? And this guy is Al, oh shoot, I don't know how to say his name, Puglius? Mm. And he's noted as... I would say Puglisi. Okay. He's noted as Walt the Windows Washer. Right. Because I guess he doesn't have a name, but he looks like he could be a Windows Washer because he's wearing some sort of maintenance uniform. (laughs) Of course. Um, 
But yeah, he has a very, if you look at his face, I realize that I know him from stuff, but I'm not really sure what I know him from. Um, but he has a ton of credits and he's still working. He was in an episode in Shameless. of Shameless. Yes. In 2021. I don't know which one survived. Maybe it might be an episode we haven't seen yet because we, we haven't finished watching right this year. Um, but yeah, he was in Community, American Horror Story, Law and Order, Castle. Yeah, so he's still working. Um, he's actually in Charles in Charge. Oh, really? Which is interesting. One episode or more Just than one? Just one episode. Okay, yeah. He says, who's the babe? And Angela says, this babe owns the place. And he's like, oh, the redhead said she owned the place. Of course. So Mona's tangoing with some guy. <laughs> And Angela goes over to him and says, Mother, what are you doing? And she says, I'm doing the tango. And then she's like, no, I mean, why is there a party raging in my office? <laughs> raging. I know. Why is there? <laughs> she's like, a client could Good walk question. in any minute. And she said, I already invited them. It's called networking. So she invited people from the building and some clients, I no. guess, just to like come in and do a happy hour. It's not a terrible idea. No, it's, it's not. <laughs> I mean, you know, she's got the window washer meeting some other clients. Maybe he can get some more work. You never know who's going to need some help. Okay, so That's true. Angela turns and a woman who is a client says, great party, Angela. And she's like, thanks, Diane. So now she's starting to think that this maybe isn't such a bad idea. Um, as far as I can tell, that lady is Donna Lowry. And she had four credits. She oh, okay. was in this episode of Who's the Boss, NBC Special Treat, which I've never heard of, Falcon Crest, and Knott's Landing. That's it. Yeah. Hasn't acted since 1989. And her credit here is client, but she does say her name is Diane. So, but you know, they're not really, <laughs> they have a hard time. With names. Yeah, getting the names over to the person who's doing the um, credits. So Diane's like, this is a great party. And Angela's like, oh, yeah, we really like to whoop it up at the Bauer Agency. <laughs> so Angela pulls Mona aside. She's like, I really need to talk to you. Tony and I had a terrible fight, and I walked out on him. I hired a nurse, but I still feel terrible. But it's funny because this is like as if someone got into a fight with her husband and then went to her mother's house. Right. You know? <laughs> like she's just coming over here to tell Mona that she got into a fight with Tony. Gosh, and, this, and all that stuff in this office scene the, the dancing and everything is just great it is it's really great like the dancing in the background yeah. a lot of just it's funny you could tell they were probably dancing to no music oh yes always so mona's like you know Sorry. you just need to go back home and help him he's a take charge kind of guy he's not going to be easy like you just need to he doesn't realize how much he needs you and she's more importantly, she just wants Angela out of the office. <laughs> she's gonna, like, Angela, you're interrupting go. the party. It'll be good for you. It'll be good for him. And it will be great for my party. <laughs> so, oh, so it is on this cut. So then this is super cute part where Mona just starts dancing and then she starts grabbing at Angela. And then Angela says, I don't want to dance. <laughs> I didn't, that part got me. I watched it tonight and I didn't understand. Like, it was almost like it was ad libbed or something. <laughs> no. Like, or like something went wrong and they didn't know what to do and then they It does almost look a little ad lib because like so Catherine Hellman's just kinda laughing and like again, grabbing I, I, at her. I don't want to dance. I don't want to dance. <laughs> yeah, that's like, fantastic. Why would she make her want to dance? So they that cut so funny. to Tony trying to dust a dish in his little wheelchair. And um the doorbell rings. So he backs up, he goes over the door. <laughs> How often do you think Tony's just dust? Like, Tony does, like, random stuff. Like, yeah. is this, like, dust the shelves day? Or I don't know. is he just, it's like, wandering around? It's the fishing pole. I guess so, yeah. So at the door is Doreen. So she is the practical nurse that Angela has hired. Now, the, one, the main thing you may recognize, this actress, her name is Jennifer Runyon. And the main thing that I recognized her from is Charles in Charge. Yeah, me too, yeah. Yeah, I think she played, she was Gwendolyn Pierce. She played Charles's girlfriend in 18 episodes. But she has quite a few other credits. She was on Another World. Mm -hmm. Oh, she's in Ghostbusters. Um, Do you remember who she is in Ghostbusters? No. Okay, so at the very beginning, Bill Murray is doing that test 
which I can't remember what it's called, where people look at the ink dot. Oh, oh no, no, yeah. I'm sorry. He's not doing that test. He's doing a test to see if they're psychic, and he's holding a picture that he can see, but they can't see. Oh, right. And she keeps getting them wrong, and he keeps saying she's getting them right because he's trying to flirt with her. Right. That's her. Um, oh, that's cool. Charles in charge. Who's the boss? Yeah. Dear John, Valerie, Quantum Leap. Dear Beverly John. Hills, 90210. Oh, interesting. Yeah, a couple episodes. Oh, and still working. Gunfight at Silver Creek, 2020. I don't know what that is. I don't either, but. Um, okay, so. Oh, no. What happened? Well, oh, maybe it's going to work. No, okay. I've been reduced to trying to use my phone to see the episode. Okay, so yes, Doreen's at the door. She says, Mrs. Bauer hired me. And Tony's like, okay, well, thanks, you know, thank you for coming. But Mrs. Bauer made a mistake, and I don't need any help. And then Doreen just starts to cry. Yeah. (laughs) Or Doreen can't do anything right. I know. She starts crying, and... She, she's like, you know, you don't want me? And he's like, wait a minute. Well, I mean, did I say something wrong? And she says, this is my first day as a nurse, and I'm already a washout. And he's like, no, no, okay, don't say that. Come in, come in. Let's see if there's something you can do. And she's like, okay. She rips her jacket off and walks in. She has a fabulous 80s outfit on here, too. I love the belt. Oh, yeah, um, it, is, it is 80s. So Tony explains, you know, I'm just really having a hard time relating to women today. So do you want to sit down? <laughs> And she explains, you know, I only took this job because I failed out of beauty school. Hmm. So I don't, I mean, I don't know a lot about nursing and I don't know a lot about beauty school, but I'm going to think that nursing is a little harder than beauty school. And I'm not to, you know, say anything bad about beauty school. I just feel like there's maybe more things that could be life threatening (laughs) in nursing school. And she says how... How was I supposed to remember all the n- colors of nail polish? Which I really don't know why you would have to remember all I the know, colors of a, nail polish that's a lot. for beauty school. But you are going to have to remember all the names of certain medicines <laughs> as a nurse. Right, right. So if, maybe this isn't the right career path for you. <laughs> um, so he's like, okay, you know what? Forget it. You, we are going to launch your career today. Like, you are in the right place. Oh, so boy. He tells her to nurse her brains out. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm all yours. <laughs> nurse your brains out. <laughs> it just sounds dirty. It does. And then she's like, really? You mean it? So he's like, sure. And he hands her. He's like, here, you can start with this laundry. And he hands her the laundry. Now, again... I don't think that's really something a nurse would do. Like, I feel like the nurse would just be there I to know. help him. Why are you like, throwing get her, laundry out? Right, of it? get around the house, make sure he's taking his medicine, and do the sponge bath that he's going to be scared of later. So she hands him. He hands her the laundry. She starts just rolling the underwear, and then like at once it's rolled, she kind of folds it once and then smacks it down on the coffee table. Right, which is obviously wrong. Yes, and, and Tony's just looking in horror as this is happening. <laughs> and she's like, is this good? And he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's great. That's very good. Then they cut to the kitchen where somehow Doreen has loaded the dishwasher and managed to break a plate and mangle like a spatula and oh. some kind of fork. Uh, yeah, it looks like, uh, yeah, she ate... Messed up a whole pan or something. Yeah. And she broke the dishwasher. So she's like, oh, I'm so sorry. And he's like, Costing oh, Costing them money. Right. It's fine. So then she says, what should I work on next? And Tony's like, how about you just sit down? Yeah. Like, Let's just take a little break. You know, we could both use a break. So they sit down and uh, she says, how's this? And he's like, you're a natural. <laughs> so Ridiculous. he's like, okay, you know, I'll be right back. You stay here. We're all good. So he rolls out of the um, kitchen and goes back into the living room. Just then, Angela comes home. He's like, oh, Angela, I'm so happy to see you. (laughs) And she's like, you are? And he's like, yes, I'm so sorry. I was picky. Like, I, you know, I shouldn't have gotten so um, particular about stuff. She says that she's sorry that she's an underachiever in underwear. (laughs) And he says, forget it. And then she's like, you know, I'm really sorry. I didn't realize how hard this was going to be on you to have to ask for help. So then Doreen comes out of the kitchen right then. And she's like, okay, Tony, I'm done sitting. I'm ready to do more for you. 
And Angela's like, oh, hi, you must be the practical nurse. Yeah, you know, like, thank you very much for coming by. Right. Um, and, she's, and she's like, yes, I'm Doreen, and I do it all. And then Angela looks her over and says, I can imagine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Again, Angela's just going to kind of be jealous at this woman who happens to be here for no real reason, but it's 80s TV. Um, and so when Angela says, I can imagine, Tony's like, no, you can't. So now Angela's kind of starting to get a little jealous. And she, Doreen says, you know, thank you so much for, have, for hiring me. Like, Tony is absolutely wonderful. He's an absolute doll. And Angela's like, oh, yes, that's our Tony. And then she says he's so laid back. And they realize that Angela says, what happened to the pillows? Because the pillows are all over the place on the couch. Oh, right. And she's like, oh, I knocked them over, so then I just put them back. And Tony's like, oh, it's just pillows. It doesn't matter. <laughs> right. And Angela's like, really? It doesn't matter. So she, oh, and I missed this part. I, I meant to look this up. But she says, he's, our, he's Mr. Laid Back. And Angela says, yeah, he's a real Perry Como. Was oh, Perry Kelmo known for being laid back? Uh, I don't know. All Maybe right, you he can had look a it up song or something. So then Doreen's so like, um, yeah. Perry Como reference before on the show? Yes. I can't remember what it was now. It was recent. Yeah, because I remember talking about Perry Como. Doreen says, Miss Bauer, I need to tell you I'm so sorry about the dishwasher. <laughs> And then Tony's like, oh, don't worry about it. You know, uh, uh, let me explain. And he's like, it, it's fine. And he tells Doreen, why don't you go back in the kitchen? And I'll tell Angela all about it. And as Doreen's leaving, she's like, okay, Tony, don't forget, five o'clock sponge bath. Yeah, no, like, come on, what's, what's <laughs> happening? When did they ever agree on a sponge bath? Right. <laughs> and he says, I'm looking forward to it. Then as she walks out, he grabs onto Angela and says, help me. <laughs> I know. But Come on. He, realistically, wouldn't Tony want the sponge bath? Yes, but I think he's worried that she's going to drown him in the tub on accident because she's oh, ruined yeah. everything. Yeah, it wouldn't be a relaxing sponge bath. No. But and he also, is any sponge... Like, okay, so realistically, if some super hot girl is going to give you a sponge bath, that's not... That's going to be an awkward, awful I experience guess. for you. I guess so. <laughs> Unless you're just a complete pervert and yeah, you don't I guess. care. I guess. Um, so, no, I know, but you know what Tony is. Right, right, right. It wouldn't even get far with the sponging. <laughs> There'd be more something else would happen in the process. <laughs> with his two little broken feet. Yeah, that's I know, true. but at this point now, I feel like Tony hasn't gone out with anyone since Frankie. No, I, I feel like not. he's not even trying anymore. Like he's... He's happy just having a sexless marriage. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. He's very um, content with it. So, yeah. So, he's like, help me. And then Angela's smacking his hands away because she's thinking the same thing you are. Like, you're getting the sponge bath from this hot girl. And everything she does is great. And everything I did was ter terrible. Yeah, of course. And, he, and he's like, no. He's like, I don't want her. I want you. And then she looks at him and he's like, oh, well, I, I mean. Well, I want you. Right, right. I want you to help me. <laughs> so she thinks that's sweet. And she's like, you do? And he's like, yes. He's like, you have no idea. This girl's not a nurse. She's a disaster. <laughs> he says she breaks dishes. She breaks everything. And at 5 o'clock, I'm, I'm going to get a lethal sponge bath. So, lethal? Yeah, he's worried she's going to drown him, I um, guess. Perry Como was just, his music was real, like, easy listening and relaxing oh, and laid back. Okay. So I think that's what the reference is. Okay, got it. Unless someone else can tell me otherwise. Yeah, I just didn't really know, like, if he was known for something or... Um, so we cut to now. Angela's in the kitchen. Doreen's gone. She's on the phone with Doreen. And Angela has her I'm home doing chores apron on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the kitchen apron. Mm. And she's like, oh, I'm so happy for you. I think that's a wonderful career choice. She's saying this into the phone. And then she says, Tony wheels in and he realizes that she's talking to uh, Dorian on the phone. And he hears Angela say, have a great time at dental school. And then he's like, ah! Right, <laughs> he screams and grabs his mouth. And he's like, dental school. And then he's like, ah... I shouldn't worry. By the time she makes it through dental school, I won't have any teeth. So 
Then she says, I have a surprise for you. And I went to the market again. She hands him peaches. Now, again, this would not make any sense to someone who watched the antenna TV version. Right. That's what I'm saying. There were so many references and they pulled the right. initial scene out. She hands him a peach and he looks it over and he's like, ooh, fuzzy and soft, but not too ripe. And she's like, ooh. And then she hands him a tomato and he says, vine ripened. And this actually looks like a tomato. This doesn't look like an apple now. Then (laughs) he's like, ooh. And then he sees plastic bags, not paper bags. So I guess before she'd put the produce in paper bags. Mm. I feel like we go back and forth throughout the decades as to what's worse, paper or plastic. Because now, like all of our produce bags, they're... They're trying to not make them plastic anymore, and they're now like a compostable like a bio, material, yeah, biodegradable, yeah, biodegradable material. But I don't remember ever putting produce in a paper bag. No. Because then how would you know what it is when you get to the register? They'd have to open everything up and look. Um, right. But he's very happy that she has the plastic bags now. Um, so, And then she hands him a tuna sandwich. A sandwich. Yeah, that she has made. And he's like, all right, well, if you wheel, wheel me back into the living room, I'll take this with me, and I want to show you something. So she very gently maneuvers him back out make into sure the living room. Make sure he doesn't crash. Right, make sure she doesn't shove him into anything. And then he pretends that she hit him into something, and so you can tell she's a tiny bit annoyed with him, but just in a joking way. So she pushes him back out in the living room where he has now arranged the pillows the way she liked them, mm. how she had done it earlier. And she's like, oh, you did the pillows my way. And he's like, yeah, you know, I figured the place could use a little bit of change. And then he's like, okay, so may I? And he reaches down to take a bite of his sandwich. I know. (laughs) So he bites into the sandwich. And, like, at first you think, okay, this is going to be awful. But he says it's delicious. Now, whether or not he's telling the truth, I know. It's hard to tell. I know. She asks him, do you mean it? And he says, it's perfection. And then he's talking about how she blended the tuna and the mayo. It's smooth but not gloppy. And then she has cut it. She's diced the chunks of onion and celery into little BB pellet sizes. BB pellets. Yeah, that's what it was. I guess is what, what, that's what you want, huh? Little BB I guess pellet so. sizes. I guess. I haven't made tuna fish sa- salad in a long time. He said, this is not a sandwich. It's a work of art. She's very excited. She says, would you like me to sign it? Now, it fades out, but it seems as though there was more to that scene. So I don't know if something else got cut in syndication, because it looks like she's about to talk again. So now we cut to the day that Tony is getting his cast off. The kids are home, waiting for them to get home. And Jonathan comes in, and he says, you know, how do they know when to stop cutting the cast? How do they know that they're not going to hit the bone or the leg, and it's going to start gushing everywhere? He's asking Sam this, and she just like has this look on her face. Right, like, what are you <laughs> so, like, where did you come from? And then she says, "What if I blindfold you and put you on the subway?" No, that sounds just terrible. some nice brother sister yeah. uh, interaction here. So Angela walk, can't, comes in. She opens the door, and she announces the new and improved Tony Maselli with an extended warranty. And he comes through the door and he's like, I can run, I can walk, I can jump. And he jumps and then he says, ah, and he falls down. And Wait. they're all like, oh, no, no, what happened? What happened? And he says, suckers. Now, how long was this supposed to be? That's So you think that's the full duration of a of a broken leg to heal? And I mean, I'm get, I'm, my thought is that that's six weeks later. Okay. Or, and we just went forward in time all right. a bit. So, because no one, no one on a sitcom ever has a broken limb for more than one episode. Right, you can't let that drag on. Right, that's a good point. Like Jonathan was in a half body cast, and he was done. He's, by he's the, next fine episode, the next episode. He was fine. We have to assume that six to eight weeks went by. <laughs> yes, <laughs> right. So that is the end of the episode. But then, like the next, what do they have? A, they don't have a Christmas one this time. So I guess it is hard to judge time if they don't mm. have anything like, um, you know. Any actual dates that would let you know what time it, when it is. Okay, I'm babbling. So, that's the end of the episode. Okay, and cool. I did rating last? Mm. No. I did do rating I last did. because you did Who's the Boss last. Okay, so I so do rating. So you go rating first. Okay. okay. 
Um, this episode, I, I mean, I give it a six. I didn't really? really. Okay. Yeah, I mean, the Angel and Tony stuff is cute, and there's some good stuff there, but it doesn't really go anywhere. Like, it doesn't... It is a very thin storyline. Right, like, and then I felt like they tried to do something with the nurse thing that didn't either translate correctly. Yeah. Like, yeah. Angela hired the nurse and then got jealous of her, and Tony wasn't even doing anything to encourage her. Right. Like, yes, if Tony was completely cheesing on her, right. hey, you give yeah, me a yeah, sponge yeah. bath later. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> right, right, but right. he was like, get her out of here. This is awful. But yet, Angela's still jealous, but yet she hired. Yeah. Like, I think at f- first, I think at first, she wasn't expecting Doreen to look like that, one. Yeah, I guess so. Then I think two. But she acts like she looked him in looking he, like that, and then he was all like cheesing on her. But right. he, he isn't at all. I think at, at all. first she thought he was cheesing on her because mm. he was telling her that all the things that she did wrong were right. But really, Tony was just scared of her, and I don't think she realized that. I know it is. It's kind of a mess. Right. He's like so I had given I, this a seven for the Tony and Angela parts, oh, but I think sorry. now maybe I should give it a six. No, 6.5. don't change the no, no, rating. Because I know. agree with you. This has never been an episode that I've loved. Like watching it this time, I think I kind of enjoyed the Tony and Angela parts a right. little more. I can, you, I can see how that would be. I agree with that. Because but like I said, I just this. There's no. I don't. Know, he sprained his ankle, and then. <laughs> And yeah, and the stuff between the two of them, fight, you know how particular Tony is with his tomatoes and right. everything, <laughs> and his pillows. Um, you know what I mean? You, you, but like, just the, the whole storyline altogether was kind of weak. Yeah, it was thin, and they really did not know how to incorporate the kids into no, it. No, not at all. Like you, you said, with that scene with um, with Samantha, where she does the yeah, talking about the like. Uh, like that was just forced or something. And yeah, I don't it know. went nowhere. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly it. Um, like they teach you when any kind of like script writing or whatever, they tell you that you can't have anything that's not needed. Like every single line that your characters say and every single thing that it people has do to advance the story should have a purpose, or, yeah. right? And like, but. That's that hasn't always been the case, and plenty of stuff has right. been made without that. And this is '80s TV, where it wasn't kind of the writing. Writing today, I think, is much tighter than it was back then. So we did have kind of these like weird things where the kids were just doing things just so that they had something to <laughs> do them. to be there. <laughs> yeah, where I feel like these days storylines are a little more tightly written. Yeah, that's true. Um, but yeah, so I did like the Tony and Angela stuff. I thought that it did some good development with them, like, you know, dealing with each other being particular and kind of just like normal stuff that you would maybe argue with someone who you're living with for in the beginning. True. Or something like that. So, and it was cute how she kind of went to Mona, like she had left her husband for the night or something and gone to her mother's. So I thought that was funny, but. Yeah, overall, it's always been kind of just an odd episode. Who's the boss around here, me or my mother? Or maybe it's you! I'm going to go with Tony, but I don't even know if I really believe that or not. Like, <laughs> Because All right. he at first insisted he didn't want anyone in the house. He didn't want any help. Then he showed Angela how much he didn't want any help. Then he got help that he didn't want and... <laughs> <laughs> he told Angela he'd rather have her help than the help that he didn't want. And then at the end, he kind of compromises, and they both kind of compromise. Like, she goes back and does the groceries the way he likes it, and he does the pillows the way she likes it. Right, so, right, right. Yeah, but I kind of felt maybe he was the boss just because he kept telling everyone what he wanted and no one was listening to him. <laughs> I know, but, like, you just even the way you just described it all... <laughs> Makes that episode seem exactly what we're talking about. Like <laughs> right. it, it, it kept hitting all these dead ends, right? And like you know, yeah. Um, I'm I'm actually gonna go with Mona. Okay, I, felt I like thought Mona, that too. Mona kept kind of trying to right the ship, and right. you know, Angel would call Mona and say, complain. Well, no, you need to do this, and you need to do that, and and you know, give Tony a break. He's particular about the way he wants things, and you know, he is injured or what I don't know like I felt like Mona was always there again equalizing and kind of riding the right the ship when it got 
Yeah, yeah, that's a good one. So I can I see know, that. I went with Mona. Okay. All right. Well, you can reach us at Who's the Boss Podcast on Instagram or Who's the Boss Pod One on Twitter. On Facebook, we have a page, the Who's the Boss Podcast page. Or you can go to anchor.fm slash WTB podcast, and there you can leave us a voice message. And somebody really, please, write the fanfic about Angela having to give Tony a sponge bath. I will read that. (laughs) And leave a review. (laughs) And kudos. Okay, so the next episode we are going to cover is... I honestly barely remember this episode. It's called The Fishy Tale. And Tony has to go help Mrs. Rosini at the fish market. While mm. still trying to do his job. Yeah, I don't remember this But Mrs. One. Rosini will be back, so yeah, I'm sure true. it'll be entertaining. Yes, it'll um, be good. Okay, is that all we do? Yes. I think that's it. Thank you, everyone. All right. Bye. Bye. If you like this podcast, please subscribe and give a big thumbs up and tell all your friends. And maybe you can tell your grandma, your mother... And y- your sister or brother, maybe have no siblings. Tell your dog and cats. Bye.